So uh, good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to this uh, presentation entitled Cybercrime and Fraud Are Not Coming Back Down, uh, Interrupted Time Series Analysis of Multiple Lockdowns in Northern Ireland. This is based on uh, a paper that uh, I co-authored with David Guirngil and Yong Yu Zen of Manchester, the University of Manchester. So just to give you a, a quick bit of context on COVID and, and crime, um, studies have shown that most or several types of traditional crime dropped uh, at the start of the pandemic, for example, residential burglaries, street thefts, uh, traffic offences. And then other studies have shown that once lockdown restrictions eased, uh, these, these crime types started to go back up to the, to the original pre-pandemic trend. But we're interested also in what happened uh, regarding cybercrime and fraud because uh, mobility restrictions likely affected these in, in different ways. Uh, there was an increased use of, of internet, uh, internet, for example, increased internet activities. So we might expect a rise in these types of crimes. And in a, a paper that we, that we, we wrote, we, we um, analyzed the first few months of the pandemic and that was the case. The cybercrime and fraud rose uh, more than was expected. However, uh, there hasn't been any, any studies on what has happened since then, since the first few months of the pandemic. So we wanted to ask the question of how have multiple lockdowns affected cybercrime and fraud in the short and medium term? Uh, to do this, we got some data from the police service of Northern Ireland uh, on recorded cybercrime and, and frauds between April 2015 and May 2021. Uh, so that means that covers three lockdowns, the lockdown in March 2020, October 2020, and January 21. So what we did with, with the data is we, we carried out some interrupted time series analysis with counterfactuals, okay? Uh, so the counterfactuals are basically uh, predicted trends if the lockdowns hadn't happened. Now, what would have been the cybercrime and fraud levels if there hadn't uh, been a pandemic and, and lockdowns? So a, a brief overview of, of some of the results. What you can see here, this blue line uh, here, this is the, 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 the counterfactual, the predicted trend, okay? And we can see in these orange dashed lines, the, the three lockdowns. And then in the, in the, the red lines, these are uh, the monthly counts of cyber dependent crime in, in Northern Ireland. And we can see a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it, it appears that uh, recorded cyber dependent crime is above the predicted level, uh, the level that was predicted based on historical data. And, but there are some differences. No, there's a very large peak here, for example. So there appears to be some differences between different uh, lockdowns. Regarding uh, a few types of fraud that we analyzed, uh, we can see here with uh, online consumer fraud, again, the levels are, are quite high above the predicted uh, levels with the counterfactual. Uh, and they've stayed above the, the predicted level throughout the pandemic. Investment in advanced fee fraud, which is often cyber enabled, uh, also has generally been above the predicted levels, but we see some differences uh, with, in, between the different lockdowns. And then we've got other types of fraud, which are mainly uh, cyber enabled as well. And we see a rising trend generally above the predicted level. So uh, some key takeaways just from that uh, brief overview of results. Cybercrime and, and fraud uh, rose during the pandemic and they rose above the expected levels and the trends were already arising, but they rose by more than, than the predicted trend and they appear to have stayed high in general. However, we see that different lockdown restrictions affect cybercrime and fraud in different manners. For example, uh, really lockdowns that have stay at home orders uh, might have uh, caused greater increases in cybercrime and fraud. Uh, a couple of things that are, that are worth mentioning. Uh, obviously, here we're looking at recorded um, cybercrime and fraud, so we have to be aware that what we might actually be seeing are changes in reporting. So that's actually something that hasn't really been studied yet, how uh, the pandemic has affected uh, reporting levels. So that's a future line of research. And another important future line of research, uh, long-term trends, the, the, many of the social changes that have been brought about by the pandemic, for example, teleworking, uh, they're going to stay uh, for the foreseeable future. So what types of effects might that have uh, on uh, cybercrime and fraud levels? So thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can have a look at the full paper. Uh, the title's here. There's a pre-print uh, pre available. And I'd be delighted to 
answer any questions. Thanks.